Welcome to Notes from the Underground with your host, Deborah Jane East, and commentaries by myself, Derek Tyler. Nothing is really as it seems these days. In order to get to the bottom line, you have to go underground, where men and women search for answers, risking their lives to bring you the truth. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Deborah Jane East, and tonight's show is very inspiring to me. For the past few years, I've uh, taken lots of pictures, as we all have, and one of the things that I noticed in some of my uh, photography was these strange little opaque circles of lights. And they didn't show up in all of my pictures, but quite a few. And uh, recently, over the past week or two, um, they started showing up in my photographs again. So, you know, I was on the internet and I was researching and I found out some of the most fascinating information uh, that I've ever come across and it totally took me by surprise because it wasn't what uh, I thought and Tonight's show is entitled Orbs, Their Mission and Messages of Hope, and it's a book by two wonderful people, and I want to tell you a little bit about them before we, um, before we get into the show, but um, I think you will really enjoy um, tonight's program. This book is about a topic that most people would find unbelievable and it's about light-filled orbs that will appear out of nowhere, but they have messages. So let me talk a little bit about the authors. Uh, Klaus Heinemann was born and educated in Germany and holds a Ph.D. in experimental physics from the University of Tübingen. Dr. Heinemann worked for many years in materials science research at NASA, UCLA, and as a research professor at Stanford University. He is the co-author, along with Michal Ledwith of the Orb Project. Gundi Hammond is his lovely wife, and she has received her degrees as an educator in Germany and teaches numerous alternative medicine disciplines. She maintains a healing arts practice in California. Klaus, Gundi, how are you doing this evening? Thank you very well. Very well. We, Thank you. We, we appreciate being on your show. Well, I, I will not lie. I have been very excited about it because after reading your book and uh, learning about your research, it's just really lifted my spirits. And uh, so I know a lot of people will benefit uh, from hearing about orbs. Now, Klaus, you've been a physics professor at Stanford University. And obviously, that is a place where, you know, the intelligence of its professors is really respected. And you're very courageous to speak about an anomaly that uh, provides evidence of an unseen world. How did you get involved in a project such as ORBS? Let me, let me first answer this, which is probably even more surprising to some of the listeners. I worked at the Material Science Department at, in the department at, at Stanford University together with a professor whom I very highly esteem up to this day, uh, Professor William Tiller. He was in the very same department where I worked. And he already at that time was courageous enough to use a lot of his spare time to do just that, research into the unseen reality. So that uh, on, only, only that as a, a part of the response to your question. Um, now, you, please feel free to, to come in. Well, you know, everybody has taken pictures and the orbs, you know, will show up you know, in the photographs, and a lot of people say that it's been different things. I'd just like to mention a few things that I was told that you totally uh, exonerated uh, for me, and that's a lot of people think that orbs are something evil. They think that they are um, spirits, evil spirits, or ghosts. I heard that quite a bit, that they were ghosts. 
And, you know, they do, they come in all colors, shapes, and sizes. I never knew that until I saw your pictures in your book. But a lot of people really thought that orbs were something negative. Is that what you thought at first, too? Or did you have any opinion on orbs? I definitely have an opinion. And no, I did not see that at, uh, at at my first experience with them. It was just the opposite. I think uh, to we have come. Both of us have come to the to the uh, recognition that orbs are the most benevolent, benevolent uh, species in the other reality that that we can think of, and that they have only one thing in mind, and that is very positive for us uh, for us here. Now, to to say that, let let me first uh, get, get right into what I believe. Uh, orbs are. And to this point, I still firmly believe that they are emanations from highly evolved spirit beings. And uh, and they have found a method of making themselves known to us here on earth uh, in such a way that they are using one of the, the most prevalent and also high-tech uh, instruments that, that, that we humans have inbe- uh, invented, which is uh, the digital camera, which is possible of making, of imaging something that takes extremely little energy. In fact, it takes uh, the energy that uh, of the order of what is uh, possible for them in the other reality to, uh, to imprint on and to make visible to us. Now, when I say them in the other reality, what I mean is uh, it has to do with orbs. Orbs are not just little phenomena. Orbs, in my opinion, are emanations from live, intelligent spirit beings. So that's incredible. That, that is incredible. And they, so they found this, this, this camera and, uh, to make themselves known. Now, the energy that it takes to imprint an orb on a CCD plate in a camera, in a, in a digital camera, is approximately 10 to minus 16 amp seconds. Now, to most of you, that means nothing. To those of you who are who are maybe have a physics background or an engineering background, they understand that that is extremely little. 10 to minus 16 amps, uh, amp seconds is approximately the energy that it takes to keep your desktop computer alive or running for one billionth of one billionth of a second. Wow. That's not very much, is it? No. And, no. and it is the about amount of energy. Uh, the, the, it's the general range of energy that is used to program human cells for right functioning. It's it's the amount of uh, the roughly the, the 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 energy equivalent that that uh, our our uh, mind um, emits, and all and, and it's it's the subtle it's the range of subtle energy that we're all exposed to, but that not necessarily we all know about and and, and feel about. That's that's incredible to even grasp that kind of information. I mean, it really, to be honest, it excited me because uh, just knowing that something like this exists is, um, you know, really will. It's hard to wrap your mind around it. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yes. First of all, let's talk a little bit about... Uh, you know, I mentioned a few things that orbs can be different colors and shapes and everything. Did you find that interesting? Because I noticed that some of the pictures of the orbs that you had, they were not just round. They were in all different kinds of shapes. Was that surprising to you? Uh, let me speak to that. Yeah, uh, actually, we found it amazing and and uh, wonderful response again how this field of unlimited possibility responds to us and takes in uh, us as individuals. And some people are drawn to circles and some to diamonds and different shapes. 
and uh, different colors. And it seems like the field just responds to us and gives us messages that we can best receive and are in tune with. Gundi, how do you feel that we can... Is there a way that we can interpret the messages of orbs that we see? Is there a way to interpret what they're trying to say? Well, uh, the way we have done it mostly is really look at the picture in the context and see where does the orb show up and uh, what is the situation. Just to give one example, we received a picture of a young woman, a young girl, age 13, who had two heart uh, transplants. And uh, the father took a picture of her, and there was a big orb on the heart. Now, to us, it was just very easy to, tr- to interpret the meaning that the invisible realm is supporting this little girl uh, on her journey through life. And there are many situations where we, where we have orbs like that. Once we have a picture of three uh, girls, and one was really um, handicapped and challenged with her health, and they come back from a long hike, And again, all the girls were surrounded by circles of light. Our our interpretation was, you know, they are enjoying life to the fullest, but they have their invisible guides and protectors right with them. And the picture just shows it in a beautiful way. Wow. Well, one of, the, one of the pictures I really loved so much is the one of the smiley face. Do you know yeah. which one I'm speaking about? Yeah. Would, yes. would one of you like to describe uh, yeah. Yeah. That? That, that, that? That is actually a little experiment. That a, a, a woman, a mother of a five-year-old child, uh, read our book, and we said in the book that you can ask the spirit entities who are the originators of these orbs, to, uh, to appear, and then, uh, you know, then, then they appear. In fact, uh, I believe that you yourself had an experience like that. I, and, re- so, I did. Yeah. So, so in this particular case, and, uh, case, you can probably share your experience with the audience too, but in, in this particular case, uh, this lady uh, just, just had a, uh, made some, you know, and asked her, her little son, five years old, to, who was watching a program on the moon on television at the time, uh, he, she, he said, well, let's draw a picture of the moon on the floor and let's have the, uh, an orb appear to make a, sni- a smiley face out of that picture. <laughs> and, so, and so after some time, it, exactly that happened. And in fact, it wasn't all that easy because there had to be two, two orbs <laughs> that had to show up as, as yeah. eyes. And that was a little too difficult. So, so uh, the mother said, "Well, maybe you can you can first mark the p- places uh, where the eyes are with two tennis balls." <laughs> <laughs> and then there were two orbs showing up on the fringes there on the side, and as if they were asking, "Now, what do you want me to do?" And then <laughs> the boy had the guts and the, the intelligence, I guess, to just roll away one of the two balls, one of the two ben- tennis balls, and lo and behold, a an orb uh, set itself in the same size and the same place where the tennis ball was. Ball was. It was so, incredible. <laughs> it was incredible. It was incredible. But uh, this, this is only an example to this particular request to show up and, and, and make yourself, and, and just to communicate and, and to, to uh, demonstrate that orbs, in fact, can communicate with us. But there is much more. There are much more profound cases uh, where where orbs appear in in photos, and and the profundity of this uh, of this occurrence is really what what people should know about. That uh, the there are communication attempts that are highly conscious and that are highly aware and important for people. We had one one example in that category where a lady who was also coming from nowhere to us and who had read our book um, saw an orb in, uh, attached to a book in her library. And uh, she photographed that and she saw, uh, she, she all of a sudden saw this orb there. And then she looked at this orb and saw two faces in them. 
And the two faces happened to be the author and the cousin of the author of the book um, that, that, that this orc was attached to, uh, the, the Mill and the Floss, by, uh, um, any, anyway, so the Mill of the Floss. So it was, it was amazing. She, she started to read that book, which she had no idea that, uh, that she had never opened it before, and found out that indeed, you know, the, 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 in the beginning of the book, there was this picture of the two persons, the author and, and, and the cousin, and then, uh, she researched the, the the whole life of the author, and she found out that uh, the author had succumbed uh, at age about age fifty five to a, a kidney disease problem, and that uh, and, and the, the, her life was in fact in all practical circumstances uh, very very similar to her own li- to her own life and so and anyway to cut this long story short she recognized through this orb picture that she had to get rid of a uh, a certain kind of painkiller that she'd been using for years or it would uh, it, it would cause the same problem with the kidneys and this was in fact a message that she had gotten from her doctor but she had ignored it. So At now, she, now she knew I really have to do something about it. So the, the, these these orbs can only be that intelligent when we understand that they are emanations from these intelligent beings. And as such, then it goes back to these beings. Now, what are they? What are these beings? That's uh, a good question. Pro- probably, mm-hmm. probably... You know, we go back to to uh, mysticism and so on, and we know that there are uh, guardian angels or beings all around us uh, that are, uh, you know, that that do want to the very best for us, only the very best, and that try to get us to get our attention, and and so this is what happened here. And they use an in- incredible um, creativity to get our attention. Isn't it awesome? You know, just it's reflect it on the hearing, story. Yes, hearing that story, I mean, it was almost like the orbs did an intervention with uh, mm-hmm. this woman. And I'll have to relate that in my own life, the first picture of an orb that I ever saw was, well, I need to tell you a little bit of background. Uh, I had surgery and I nearly died. It was about 15 years ago and I had a near-death experience. I, you know, oh. almost died, but, you know, I just asked, could I stay here a little bit longer? You know, I had things that I wanted to do and, you know, God was gracious and here I am. So I found, I was very sort of depressed, you know, a little bit after that and everything and I found this um, heart-shaped stone in the grass. I don't know what made me find that stone. Something just said, reach down into the grass. I couldn't see anything. So I found this rock that looked like a sort of a broken heart. It had like a crack in it. And I heard a voice within me say, even though your heart is broken, it's still a heart and you can still love again. I had went through a divorce and had, you know, the bad surgery experience. And and it, it was a message that filled me with hope. And the first picture that I had taken of me holding that little heart-shaped stone, I had the stone out to the side of my body, right, I kid you not, right on my heart was an orb. Hmm. Right yeah. on my heart. Oh. That is the first experience with an orb picture. And then many times after that, uh, in my home, around my home, in my front yard, there would be pictures of orbs from time to time. So I never really knew what they are. You know, just what I'd read online, which mostly consists of that they're, you know, ghosts or different things like that. I hadn't really formed an opinion. But recently I came to Washington. um, You know, I'm here working on a project, doing some things. And lo and behold, just a couple of weeks ago, the orbs showed up again, Mm -hmm. and they look different. These were different, you know, looking orbs. They sort of, some of them do have sort of faces in them. 
Yeah. They, yeah. they have designs and patterns, and I thought, wow, this is amazing. And I started enlarging some of the pictures of the orbs, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So that's what, that's what got me to get on the Internet. And, um, you know, Dr. Hyman, your name came up. You know, you and uh, Gundy, your book. And I thought, wow, this is, this is a physicist. And, you know, yes, you were brave enough to go in there and to write these books. And it just really, it just opened up a whole new thing for me. So I'm, I'm, it's funny how we got connected here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, actually, it's actually, actually very interesting when you say it is, you, you are brave enough. Brave um, enough. That's almost a statement, a sad statement of reality. It is. Uh, because that's where we still are. Mm -hmm. We are still entrenched in the belief system of the last, I don't know, what, 400 years or so, where we only latch onto things that we can understand, see, feel, touch, and so on, even calculate, and where we just simply either and straight out dismiss or even ridicule anything that goes beyond that. Well, you're exactly right. Let's talk a little bit about how the scientific community has reacted uh, to your project because you do, I mean, I read all your credentials um, that you have and everything, and I'm sure that you probably encountered some skepticism because, you know, I do a show about things like this, and I receive a lot of remarks from family and uh, people that in my community, and some of it is not always, you know, positive. So what kind of reception have you received in the, from the scientific community? Um, I, it's, it's really both. There are many respectful people in the scientific community who are who are totally in line with uh, with what we believe, and there are others who are just simply um, so so entrenched in their in their criticism and in their uh, that that you know that doesn't make much sense to even talk with them. In well, fact, I I totally understand that. I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So but so you know, that's. You have a passion to contribute to mending the rift between science and spirituality, and has that made has that made a difference in in your work? Maybe you want to talk. Both of you want to talk a little bit about uh, the things you know that you're doing. Your workshops, your seminars, and retreats, and everything. Because you, you guys, I tell you, you do a lot of wonderful work. You do a lot of wonderful yeah. work. It's very exciting to hear about it. Um, I'll, I'll just uh, say a couple of sentences and then give it over to, to Gundi in this, for the, regarding this question. I really, yes, uh, mending the rift between science and spirituality has been uh, the theme of, of my life, if I, if, if, if I want to phrase it that way. Um, but our overall mission, I believe, is helping people to tap into the field of unlimited resources to manifest well-being. That's the overall. Uh, uh, that's the overall goal that we have, to manifest uh, the the people well, the people's well-being. Now, Gundi, maybe you want to say a few more words. Yeah, that that really sums is up, and um, we allow um, the intelligence of the spirit guide us to whatever is the next project. And one of them has become recently to take people who are ready for it uh, on trips to um, John of God in Brazil. And one of the statements that the founder of this healing center in Brazil um, made really responds to the question you asked earlier, Deborah, about the skeptics. And um, the center is called the Healing Center of St. Ignatius de, de, of Loyola, who was... Um, um, what was his background? Oh, he was a, pr a priest. Yes, and he said, those who believe, no words are necessary, but those who do not believe, no words are possible. So in other words, you know, why do we even focus on the critics? 
they are just not ready yet. But that doesn't mean that all of us who feel, uh, you know, orbs are meaningful and healing is possible, that we be quiet about it. We just continue with what gives us excitement and joy and allow things to happen and call it as, as we feel it deserves to be called. And then in time, when the skeptics are ready and um, they might have an experience, and then all of a sudden they turn around and join. And, and, and we have experienced many times that people came to uh, on our trips to Brazil just because one family member maybe dragged them there, no expectation for themselves, and then they were the first ones to being worked on and experience what we call a miracle. A miracle of healing or a miracle of transformation or a miracle in opening up to this field, this invisible field. The, the I love that. I love that so much. This world yeah. needs things like this, you know, for healing. So that that statement just really thrilled me. I really appreciate that. But let's get back to the critics for a moment because it really is interesting. I have the very strong impression that the voices of the critics are dwindling, not increasing, but dwindling. And there are because the evidence that is coming out is absolutely overwhelming. And I'll give you one example. First, this example you can find in our website, and uh, maybe the people want to know the website, it's called healingguidance.net. And within that website, healingguidance.net, there are numerous, and uh, the pick number four, when, you see, when people get into that site, picture number 24 is the example I want to talk about. Uh, for a long time, uh, critics, uh, and also really serious critics, uh, said that uh, orbs would just be reflections at dust particles. I mean, you, I'm sure you've heard that. Oh, yes, I'm that's what that? I heard. Right. That, that theory is totally uh, dismantled. Uh, it cannot be upheld, upheld anymore. Uh, through the following example, and, and many others like that, when you have a tele photo lens, telephoto camera, or use your camera in the telephoto mode, then uh, the, uh, the orb would become, if it is in fact near the lens, it would become so diffuse that uh, you would very clearly see it as, a, as a, just a fuzzy little circle and nothing else. Now, uh, back on June, what is it, in the June 15 of this year, the German soccer team world, uh, won the World Cup, and there was a you know they, when they when they got the cup in their hand, there were uh, photographers all over. They were all quite far away from from where the on people the bleachers, on, yeah. the, on somewhere, and probably I don't know twenty meters or six, 50, 50 feet, something like that. And so they used their super tele telecameras, uh, maybe 400 millimeters in focal lengths or something like that, and photographed them while they were receiving this this cup. And uh, the German uh, newsprint, Der Spiegel, which is a very uh, famous, uh, famous magazine, um, printed three photos that they took that uh, that they took when they received this this cup, and all three of them that they printed had a huge orb about three feet away or two feet away from their heads, and that orb was you know it couldn't possibly have been anything and uh, anything to do with with a dust particle. It would have been a, a, a dust particle of the size of four inches. It was it, this this orb, without a question of a doubt, was within that that distance that I just described, a couple of feet or three feet, and uh, it was published there, and nobody even mentioned it. They, uh, they I think they probably didn't, didn't have any idea what they were publishing, but these photos are there, and you can find one of them on uh, as the photo number twenty four mm -hmm. on our website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is fascinating uh, to see all the pictures, and um, once you realize that the position sometimes of the orbs is 
it's trying to communicate something about yes. what's going on, you start noticing things. And I do want to mention that. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, Dr. Hyman, you did extensive testing, you know, about ORDS and sterile conditions. Uh, you did a lot of different things to prove what it what they weren't. Yes. And I think that's what was so convincing to me is the amount of research that you did and uh, all the conclusions that you came up with. So that was very convincing to me. But why do you think that the world wants to – do you think it's just lack of education or is it their belief system that people want to think of orbs as something negative? Good question. I think I think it's the, really the conventional uh, thinking that's still dragging on with some people, and they haven't taken the time to, you know, get into the subject matter and really inquire. And but when people are ready, they will change, and it can happen quickly. And when we talked about the previous picture, for example, the orbs in the magazine of the Time magazine in Germany, and many people will just wonder and say, oh, what's this red circle there in the picture, and then put it aside and not ponder it any further. It reminds me of the fact um, when they say, when the first ships came to the United States, the Indians had never seen a ship, and they just couldn't see them. So it's the same with the orb. Some people have never entertained that there is a field of beyond that wants to communicate well-being to us and help us, so they are not ready. But the moment the heart opens, then all of a sudden they look at the picture and say, oh, look at these circles. And uh, they are messengers uh, from beyond to us. And the first all pictures we know have not uh, been photographed just recently, in recent years, but we had them a long time ago, but most people didn't know what to do with them. They said, oh, they're just red spots on the photo. Let's just put it aside. It's not a good one. So, in other words, there is more for us to discover, and the, ready ne uh, the readiness needs to happen first, and it always starts with a creative minority, and you, Deborah, definitely belong to those because you, you get the message out and many others. Yeah. Well, I did find out that since um, I have learned so much about orbs that sometimes I am able to see them, you know, not through the camera lens, but out of the corner of my eye. Mm -hmm. I, I see these things. I know which corner of the room they're in or, or I can... I sense their location, where they're at. Uh, one time I was taking a picture, and this, a couple of seconds before I took the picture, I saw the orb in front of me. So mm -hmm. did, did you find that uh, in your research, that some people are able to see yes. orbs as well as, you know, yes. do uh, photograph them? Yes, I think you've described extremely well uh, what, uh, what some people do see. We personally, neither I nor Gundi, have had that experience, but we know quite a few people who had that. And you're just confirming this again. Mm -hmm. um, when we were taking our first orbs uh, kind of photographing seriously, um, we had a, there was a friend who is a, a clairvoyant person, and he, he said, okay, I'm going to show you when you can photograph. This and then he said, you know, up there there is an orb, and uh, we photographed, and indeed there was an orb in the photo, so he could see them. Mm -hmm. uh, in the book, orbs, the, uh, the mission and messages of hope. We also describe a an incident where a woman was around a couple of orbs for about two hours, and they they walked with her. She walked, I don't know, back and forth for a quarter mile from one place to another, and they the orbs were always around her. And so she describes in detail what happened and what she felt and and how the whole situation was. And it was it's very clear some people see them and some people don't. Now these these orbs or the these the spirit entities who are emanating orbs are um, they do that in such a way that the either the person 
or the photographer uh, who, uh, who took the photo will receive them best, will see them best, so that they will actually receive the message or have a chance to receive the message that, that they are giving. They, wow. That is clear. Wow. That is clue. So this uh, this lady that I talked about, who who had a life threatening uh, uh, illness uh, that uh, cured by that, uh, she saw she was prone to see f uh, faces in an orb, and so she saw these these two faces. I personally had a very hard time to even see uh, seeing those two uh, figures there. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to to uh, distinguish that in, in you know in all the fuzziness mm -hmm. of the orb picture. But you describe beautifully, they say, if one wants to learn it, just like you did, uh, to look to the corner of the eye, and that's where we discover them first. And I think it's a possibility for each of us, uh, if we're interested in it, you know, to become more perceptive in these matters. Well, that's, that's really, I guess, what it boils down to. And... Um You know, I wanted I wanted to know about the orbs. They fascinated me. And uh, as you probably guessed from the name of my radio show, which is Skywatcher, you know, I deal a lot with uh, extraterrestrial things, uh, UFOs, yeah. and things yeah. of that nature. Now, some people have, I saw lots of pictures, and they, they term them orbs, but they may not be in the sky. They will talk about seeing large orbs that seem to be opaque. Are there orbs? Did you find any kind of evidence that orbs sometimes appear in the sky, Klaus? Or do you yes. think these are other other anomalies besides that, orbs? That um, I, I, we've we've seen orbs in in plain daylight, and um, whether they are the same phenomena. As uh, as you're talking about is questionable, but it, they probably all. I believe that they all fall into the same category of phenomena, uh, meaning of of um, communication that uh, is directed at us from another reality. Now, I've thought a lot about uh, the, the 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 term extraterrestrial. And what that could be in in, with, in in relation to orcs, and I, I've come to the conclusion that uh, it is uh, that the the term needs to be defined. You know, obviously, what what many people have seen as ETs uh, or as as evidence for ETs is uh, still believed to be something that is of physical nature. Whereas orbs, I do not think that they are of, a, of an actual physical nature. It's only physical if you, if you extend our normal physical reality all the way from, from the physical to the non-physical, to, to the realm of consciousness, to the realm of uh, to what we normally would call a spiritual. Um, so in that sense, extraterrestrial, Would would work because it is outside of the of the Earth of of the the physics that we have on the Earth here. Exactly. But, you see that, uh, but the the definition may be may not be um, how would I say may, may not be accurate enough. One would have to probably uh, define even more even even better words. So I think there is more to extraterrestrial. Uh, phenomena that then literal beings coming from a different planet within our universe. I think there is even more than that. Well, I'll have to agree with you. I have been uh, recently working with Ray Hernandez of the Free Foundation, who mm -hmm. has a lot of pictures of orbs that he calls it, he had a visitation. They saw these the orbs in their home and in their environment and Then later, I think he even had experienced an extraterrestrial contact. And so I don't know if those two are related, but I definitely think that sometimes um, these things coincide with each other somehow. I, yes. I don't really yes. understand it, but, well, I will say this. You talked about consciousness. 
um, so what exactly are you saying that the orbs they do have a consciousness of their own I'm saying that following according to the experience that we have had so far that I have had so far is that orbs are emanations from beings that are highly evolved yet uh, don't have a body obviously and, and, and but but have have a lot of consciousness so they 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 are indications that there is another reality that is way beyond ours and that is not physical and that is probably also outside of the universe as we know it yet there is uh, it's it's, it's there, there there's a dimension that is way beyond our the dimensions of our universe yes and uh, i think that's hard for people sometimes to grasp yes because yes. you know you People, well, for instance, I, I hate to pick on my parents, but I will because I know they probably uh, won't get to hear the <laughs> show. But, uh, you know, they have lived and uh, been raised in the same community all their life. And this would probably be hard for them to grasp, you know, about the orbs yes. because it's outside of what they knew when they were growing up and, and when they're adults. But... You know, for people who are really innovative and they uh, are hungry for knowledge about these kind of subjects and the more you study it and the more you experience it, it's like there is a whole new door, a window in your life that is open to you. And mm -hmm. when I saw that uh, you were saying that the orbs have a, a message of hope. I just thought that was incredible, and it took away a lot of... I didn't have fear of the orbs, but, you know, if you don't understand what something is, it sort of intimidates you a little bit. And I guess that, that's conditioning. Mm -hmm. Yes, it? conditioning. You know, it, is, it is the conditioning, and, and the, the media and the film industry and all of that, they have latched onto this conditioning, you know, if, if something has to do with ghosts or with orbs, it is it is usually mean and it is against us, and, and so you know that, it's just conditioning. I do not I do not uh, agree with that conditioning, and I I, I firmly uh, yeah I, I firmly think that um, there in that reality that we probably would best call the spiritual reality, there is no meanness, there is no ill will, there is only the very best uh, intention uh, toward us. Oh, I love that. I love that, Dr. Hyman. That is, that is so wonderful to hear you say that because that's, well, that's how I believe. I believe that there is goodness and there is no evil and uh, it's uh, a good to spread that message at a time when the world sometimes seems so chaotic with all the things that are going on you yes, know overseas and in our in the United States with um, you know all of the different issues and stuff that our country has so it's a very positive message and do you think that sometimes you mentioned about the woman and her healing, her heart issues. It seems like the orbs have compassion on us as human beings. They have compassion and they want to help. And I would surely think that this would be a message that everyone could embrace, you know, that it's a, a very positive thing. And I just um, want to say that not a lot of people of your stature would take on a subject like this because of all of the things that people believe that are out there and that you can be discounted. So wonderful work that you're doing. Would you all like to talk a little bit about, um, I know that you do a workshop on quantum touch, I think Gundy, that is what you do. Could you talk a little yeah. bit about that for everyone? 
Yes, um, I teach, uh, actually, we both teach a number of uh, subtle energy healing modalities and uh, where the individual uh, learns uh, simple methods and then they can assist themselves and others and actually even do distant healing for loved ones far away or uh, issues that concern you concerning the blow, uh, the world and contribute to well-being and it's it's very uh, easy but it allows the individual to just tap into this field and be an instrument of compassion of love and of healing so we are all excited about teaching quantum touch and then pranic healing and reiki and different methods and if you really look at the uh, difference of them you find the uniqueness and the commonality which has to do with um asking to be an instrument uh, for healing and tapping into this uh, unconditional love that's available uh, for all of us and actually within us and just remembering and then be of service. Oh, that, that, is, uh, that is certainly something that I want to do, you know. And I know my producer, Rachel Love, is listening to this show. And when you talked about sending energy, distant healing, and uh, things like that, she has embraced that for a long time. And, um, you know, you just, I have received that myself, and it's just something that you feel. It's a real thing. I've seen her do this with other people, so... It's it's an amazing thing to experience and yes. and the, know, the orb the orb research actually uh, solidifies that and it, it it all but proves it that that is that that is possible that in that in that area where the orbs are uh, produced quote unquote there is no uh, distance and uh, there no distance barrier and no time barrier. And so, with our intent, we can we can go anywhere in the universe and have an effect, including a healing effect. Uh, so, so healing is really nothing other than us humans uh, tapping into this field where all the energy is, all the the subtle energy is, and and get the healing from there. Mm-hmm. We are we are so proud often that we forget that the fact why you and I are still alive and doing well is not something that that we uh, that is that that effect is really effect of, of an effect of grace uh, that, that we've received that and it's constant healing that was given to us and that caused you know uh, that contributed to that it's not ourself, our own doing. It is coming from a reality that is that where we all came from. That yes. it gives us, you know, mm. uh, gives us this energy. Mm. Well, so, uh, that's that's very profound. Hearing you say that, that is very profound. I even wrote that down as you were saying it because, <laughs> you know, the fact that there is no distance, there is no time barrier, and if you embrace this. And you can, it's almost like um, you, you feel this alive in your, in your consciousness that you can do this. And I've experienced it myself. And, you know, basically when I found that heart stone and then I experienced the orbs, I felt like, you know, it was an open door. Because I found that stone, I wrote a book. I became an author, and now I have a radio show. It's like it was a. It's like a domino effect. It it really has changed my life, and I think, you know, the more I hear you speak about it, I just think about what a positive message for people to embrace in their life if if they experience this themselves. So, mm-hmm. just a, a wonderful thing. A wonderful thing. And the beautiful thing is, it's available for everyone. Uh, you know, if the individual is is interested, but they, in the field of unlimited possibilities, uh, honor our free will and our choice. So we can say yes and pursue it, or we can just leave it to others. It's it's our choice, but it is available. Well, I I do think that the world is embracing things like this more because, uh, you know, 
I research a lot of things, and in studying quantum science and all the things related to that, it's like the universe is open. We do have, you know, we really limit ourselves to uh, things that we can do. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. Yes. And um, so it's a fascinating thing. I would love for you to tell everyone uh, your websites and how they can purchase your books because you have written other books. I think you have six other books, and um, and you also yeah, have yeah. written a lot of scientific papers as well. Yeah. yeah. So, so the, the the most significant website where people could really find everything else would be healingguidance.net. Healingguidance.net. And if they go there, and then they find uh, a, a subtitle uh, books where, where, where they can get a hold of uh, all the books. One book is um, Orbs, Their Mission and Messages of Hope. Another uh, more, more recent book is actually uh, uh, one that, that, is, that goes way beyond just orbs. It's called Expanding Perception. And uh, the subtitle is Rediscovering the Grand Original Design. And of course, if you grant original design, if you capitalize these three words, you know what you get to, which is God. It is it is a, uh, a book that we would very highly recommend. Um, and but but again, you can find all the information at healingguidance.net slash books. Well, that's wonderful. I hope that everybody will uh, out there listening. If you've taken. Um, pictures and you saw orbs in them and you have a fascination with them and you want a wonderful message then uh, I do encourage you to to read these books and I've read I've read orbs you know mission of hope but uh, you know the other orb book is on my Christmas list so I plan on reading that uh, I just want to say both uh, Dr. Hyman you and your wife Gundy I tell you, you animate such warmth and such such a, a positive message. I just can't thank you enough for being on my show. Can I ask you both? Is there uh, are there more books in the future? Are you planning on writing more books, or, or what's ahead yeah. for you? Uh, def- definitely, yes. Mm-hmm. But there's there is one other book that is uh, that uh, it's actually a, a long article uh, that uh, is has the most recent research on orbs in it and that is uh, also you can also find that book it was it was published in the magazine light uh, last year or early this year actually so uh, some some of your listeners may might want that and again you can find the the reference to that article uh, in light as in the magazine light it's called um, let me just just bring it up here the orb phenomenon Bridging to the World Beyond. So I would recommend reading that. And you can read the whole article without even buying anything directly on the Internet when you go oh, to, our, to our wonderful. website. And then we wrote a book that is called Being the Change. And I'm sure that some of your listeners would be very interested in reading that. Uh, it, it deals with how important it is that we change, that we adapt to new situations uh, so it, 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 has, it includes the, the key teachings that we all need to undergo if we want to evolve, evolve to where we are intended to evolve to. Well, that is wonderful, Dr. Hyman, and I do encourage everybody uh, to uh, go to the website and uh, also to check out these books uh, for just a really uh, joyful read and... Uh, I just want to say it's been a pleasure to have both of you on my show, and I hope you continue writing books and doing your workshops because, you know, for people out there that um, need this kind of stuff in their life, I think it's going to open a whole new world to them, uh, a whole new experience, and I thoroughly recommend that everybody check out your books. I hope you have a wonderful uh, Christmas holiday and that all your travels are safe. And I want to thank you both for being on my show. And we thank you for having us. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, everyone. This has been Deborah Janey. Join us again next week as we talk about subjects, uh, everything from extraterrestrials, from UFOs, orbs, all kinds of different phenomenon. I appreciate it, and this is Deborah Janey signing off. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Notes from the Underground with your host, Deborah Jane East. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook. 